Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's Dealer On webinar, How to Increase Showroom Visits and Service ROs with Waze Local. My name is Eliana Raggio and I'll be your moderator today. And today's webinar is being presented by DealerOn. For anyone who isn't familiar with DealerOn, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency, best known for our amazing SEO, the best customer service, and the highest converting website designs in the industry, including the award-winning Chameleon Responsive Website Platform. We've been awarded the Driving Sales Dealer Satisfaction Award for top-rated websites for an unprecedented seventh year in a row. We also took home the AWA Award for Best Websites three times, plus FCA and Ford have announced that we're now an approved vendor. Big things are always happening over here at DealerOn. We're still the only company in the industry that offers a money-back lead guarantee program. Do you want to know more? Yeah, you do. You can check us out at our gorgeous brand new DealerOn website at DealerOn.com. And Digital Dealer is just around the corner. Time for some sun in Orlando, Florida. Did you know that we're giving away $100 for scheduling a demo with us? Use the link below to sign up. And if you are going, make sure you catch DealerOn's very own Greg Gifford as he presents a fantastic local SEO session that will use real-world examples and case studies. Come to booth 307 and see why thousands of dealers have partnered with us to sell more cars more profitably. Hope to see you there. We have a great show in store for you today. We're very pleased to have Justin Nabosna as a first-time Dealer On webinar presenter today. Justin Nabosna is the Head of Channel Sales and Agency Partnerships at Waze, a subsidiary of Google. Justin is responsible for scaling Waze's media products to local businesses across the U.S. and Canada. His focus is on building strategic partnerships to unlock new sales channels and traditional and digital media companies as well. Prior to joining Waze, Justin worked as a business development manager at Google, fueling acquisitions and revenue growth for Google's small to medium business team. Earlier in his career, Justin served as a captain in the U.S. Marine Corps Infantry and built an education technology startup with his two brothers. Justin holds a B.S. in International Relations and Affairs from the U.S. Naval Academy and an MBA from Columbia Business School. And he can be reached through LinkedIn. And by the way, Waze will be exhibiting at the upcoming Digital Dealer Convention, so be sure to stop by booth 316 and you can say hi to Justin Nabosna in person. Hope to see you there. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, we're going to try to respond by email later today. And don't forget, a link to download a copy of this webinar recording will also be emailed to you later today for your reference. Feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. And guess what? Our good friends at Waze have two great prizes today on the webinar. First, one of you lucky webinar attendees is going to win a Waze swag bag filled with all kinds of Waze awesomeness. Yes! Second, one person will win a Google Home Mini. It's the hottest home tech device on the market. Such great prizes. But you know what? You have to be on the live broadcast to win one, so stay tuned for your chance to walk away with one of these awesome prizes today. Also, at the conclusion of this webinar, you're going to get a short survey, so fill it out. We're always looking for quality feedback from our audience. We want to hear what you have to say about today's show. And hey, do you tweet much? We hope you do. We'd love to see what you have to say about today's presentation, so please tag us in it. You can use hashtag DealerOnWebby, and I'm at Eliana Raggio. We look forward to seeing what you're saying. All right, everyone, let's get started. Let's learn how to increase showroom visits and service ROs with Waze Local, Justin Nabosna, welcome to the Dealer On webinar series. How are you, sir? Good, thanks. Good to be here. Pretty excited about it. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about it. We always love having great people from Google stop by and show us what's going on over there, but this is something we've never talked about. We've really never talked about any kind of GPS or navigation or anything like that to bring, actually physically bring people to Dealerships, this is really, really exciting. So I'm really interested to hear what you have to say and how this Waze Local is going to help dealerships increase their showroom visits. And how is it going to increase their service ROs? i got to hear this. So I know you have a lot to get to. So why don't we just tell the audience right now the kinds of things they're going to be learning about, and let's get this show on the road. All right, sounds good. Well, hello, everybody. Hopefully uh, this is a very meaningful and entertaining one-hour presentation. 
I encourage you to please uh, send in your questions as we go through so that way I can answer them as we go. And it makes it a lot more um, conversational for me rather than me sitting up here and just talking to you guys through a webinar for an hour. Um, so learning, what are we going to learn about today? Uh, I want to just tell you guys a little bit about ways and what we're doing here. I know uh, the ad platform is very new to small, medium businesses. Um, so I want to talk about just ways in general first and then why it's a good fit for auto, especially, you know, uh, it's a good fit obviously for, you know, restaurants and things like that, but why is it so important to the auto world? And then talk about our ad offering and then finally do some case studies and then some Q and A. So, um, like I said, you could send in questions throughout. Um, and then if you have other questions at the end, we could also answer them uh, at the end of the session. So before we get started, I want to do a quick poll question. Eliana, I don't know if you want to, uh, lock this one out, but I want to just see how many people use Waze versus Google Maps versus Apple Maps um, and, and see what the results look like. Well, let's see what they had to say. Have you ever considered advertising on Waze? This is the question that is on the screen now. We want to know if you could please select one of the following answers. I'm already advertising on Waze. I'm interested, but you know what? I think I need to learn more. You know what? I am never considered advertising on Waze, but maybe I'll consider it after today. We used to, and I think we should do it again, or you know what? I didn't even know Waze existed until today. That's all right, too. Once we figure out what's going on at your dealership, Justin's going to be able to help us out and figure out how he can help you increase your showroom visits and service ROs. So once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close this poll and share the, whoa, whoa, this was fast. Audience is on it today, Justin. I already have almost everyone voting. This is amazing. Audience, you are just so on it. Thank you so much. I'm going to close this poll early. What? And share the results. All right, Justin. The question was, have you ever considered advertising on Waze? 9% of today's audience say that they're already advertising on Waze. That's great. 27% of today's audience, however, says that they're interested, but they're hoping to learn more about it today. Another 27% said they've never considered it before but maybe they will consider it after today. 5% of today's audience say, we used to, and I think we should do it again. Nice, I like hearing that. But the majority, 32% of today's audience, <laughs> didn't even know Waze existed until we brought it to them today, dealer on webinar. That's what we're here for, people. Thank you so much. Audience, we got one more poll question coming at you a little bit later on today. But thank you so much for starting our show off right and answering that first one for us. Justin, I don't know if that's what you were expecting to hear, but why don't you tell us some more about Waze? Let's see if we can educate yeah. these people. No, it was, it's exactly what I was expecting to hear because a lot of people um, don't even know what, what's going on at Waze or even if it does exist. And it's kind of funny because, uh, you know, even at Google, you know, Google Maps is the dominant mapping platform, but Waze is, is very much so a competitor in the space. And it's actually uh, one of the dominant navigation apps where there's a difference between mapping and navigation. Um, Eliana, do you have the second poll question by any chance? Yes, I do. Second poll question can, is we, on the screen now. We're doing it right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second poll question is on the screen now. We want to know, you personally, audience, you did so good on the first one, we're throwing the second one at you. You personally, what is your primary GPS app that you use on your phone? Please select one of the following answers. Is it Google Maps and only Google Maps? Is it I use Google Maps, but I, I've heard about Waze. I know about Waze. Do, are you a are Waze all the way? Waze, baby. How about you use Apple Maps or, you know what, I don't use GPS. I know where I'm going. Once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close this poll and share the results. And I want to tell you, audience, um, quickly about a conversation that I already had with Justin when we were preparing for this show. Um, I went into my Verizon store to fix something on my phone and and they actually told me about Waze. That was the first time I heard about it. And they referred Waze to me. And they said, that's the best GPS app out there. And before, and I downloaded it right there in the store. I hadn't heard about it before either. So a lot of you are probably way ahead of me because <laughs> I think a lot of more of you knew about Waze probably than before I did. But um, Oh my gosh, almost everyone has voted. Audience, you're amazing. Thank you so much. We are going to close this poll and share these results. All right, Justin, here we go. 21% of today's audience say their primary GPS app that they personally use is Google Maps 
and only Google Maps, so about a fifth of today's audience. The majority, however, 42% of today's audience, say they use Google Maps, but they know about Waze. All right, so altogether that's 63% that are using Google Maps. 17% of today's audience say they're Waze all the way, Waze baby. 21% of today's audience say they use Apple Maps. And no one <laughs> said that they don't use GPS and that they know everywhere they are in the global position of the Earth. Okay, so Justin, does that help you out? That does. It helps me out a lot. 21% Apple Map users out there. That is uh, surprising. I don't know who you guys are, but um, if you're not using Waze, I suggest at least going to Google Maps. But, hey, <laughs> personal preference. And, by the way, Cameron uh, wrote in. Right, she said, so. Cameron says that's 101%. Well, that's how we do it around here, the dealer. <laughs> so thank you so much for pointing that out, Cameron. All right. Justin, let's do this. What do you got to show us about Waze? You got it. So for the 32% that don't know uh, that Waze exists or didn't know Waze existed until today, I'm going to give you a few slides on just uh, a little bit about Waze and what we're doing here. So to start things off, Waze is the world's largest community-based navigation app. Right now we have 100 million users globally and uh, about 27 million active users um, in the United States. Uh, we were bought by Google about four years ago um, for over a billion dollars and a lot of people ask, like, if we're bought and owned by Google, why is Waze still separated from Google Maps? Why don't we just join them together and create one awesome mapping platform? Uh, and the answer is twofold. The first reason is Waze is strictly a navigation app. So you're only turning on Waze when you're in your car and you're driving somewhere. Whereas Google Maps is pretty much the robust platform that can do anything. So if you're planning a vacation to Hawaii, you could search the hotel from your couch and look at the street view and look at the rooms and do everything from Google Maps. It's hard to kind of interlock those two things. The second thing, which is actually the more important thing, is that Waze is a social platform. So what that means is, unlike Google Maps, you could actually input data into the Waze map as you go. So instead of just collecting passive data, we're collecting active data from our users, whether that's traffic jams, police uh, sightings, accidents, um, and things like that. So what that allows us to do is that our app actually gets better with more users that sign up. And the more users that sign up, the more input we get into our, our platform and the more people want to sign up because the map keeps getting better. And that's really important for us because our users love using Waze. So once you're signed up, usually we don't get a lot of churn in terms of people who don't like Waze. And you can see that here in Forbes uh, did the top 50 most relevant brands in the United States uh, in October 2017. And Waze actually showed up as the 35th most relevant brand in nice. the U.S. Nice. I did not know that. That's really awesome. Yeah, and this is, when you, when you, when you talk about brand relevancy, people are like, well, well what does that even mean? Uh, and it, it's basically based off of three things, right? It's The first is how much do the users love Waze? And, and that's easy. Like, users love our product. The second is how beneficial is it to the user? So, obviously, Waze is helping you outsmart traffic and get from point A to point B faster. So we scored high in that one. And the third is innovation. So how innovative is the company and where they're going? So Waze, if you, if you notice here, if you look at all the brands, Waze is actually the only native application that's on the top 50. And it's the only, besides Pinterest, the only social application that's on the top 50. So you don't see a Facebook or an Instagram here. Um, so we're really proud of this. And it shows that our brand relevancy with our users and with the people in the U.S. is actually very, very high. So... What are the Wazers doing on the platform? So the average Wazer spends 10 hours a month on the app. And, and that makes sense if you think about it. If you're driving to work and your commute's 30 minutes a day, you're going to and from, people still plug into Waze because if there's traffic, they want to know how to get around it in real time. So when that adds up per month across the U.S., we're actually seeing 6 billion miles driven every month by our Wazers. And that's a lot of time. And if if you look at the average American, they spend over seven work weeks in their car every year. And they're driving over a billion miles a month on Waze. What this means is this is a lot of time they're spending in their car on our app. And it's a lot of time that you could actually get in front of them when their attention is really dedicated just to the mapping platform. So they're not doing a lot of other things in a car. Whereas when you're at home, you're watching TV, you're not sure if they're watching the commercials or if they're searching online, you don't know if they're actually looking at it or not. We know when they're in their car, they're looking at the road, and then if they're at a stop sign or something like that, they usually take a look at the map and see what's going on. And that's where Waze is most relevant. 
so why is it relevant for retail for auto retail right so like what what does this mean to dealerships what does this mean to drivers and i want to just go into a few things and again if you have questions feel free to fire them away of why ways matters to dealerships so of the 27 million wages we took a we took a poll uh in the united states last year and we asked wages a lot of automotive questions and we said you know who's looking to buy a car in the next 12 months and 40 percent of wagers said they're looking to buy a car in the next 12 months. Now, are 40% going to buy a car? Absolutely not, that's just crazy. You're not gonna get 40% of 27 million people look, uh, actually buying a car, but they're looking. So if they're looking, it's probably important to be there in that decision-making process when they're searching for that car. And if you look at the national average on Google of dealership visits per, uh, consumer in a decision-making process, the national average is one to two visits um, per, per person. Now, that's obviously changing with this digital world. Now you can do all these things like virtual uh, you know, test drives, everybody's shifting to online. You can even bar car, buy a car online now. Well, it's a little different with Waze users. Waze users are dedicated drivers. These people love driving. They're in their car a lot. They're driving you know, 30, to, to 30 minutes to an hour a day in, in heavy traffic commutes. So they do one of two things a lot. One is they're gonna be buying a car probably more often than the regular average American, or they're gonna be doing a lot of fixed stops more often than regular, regular average American. And they care about their car because they use it a lot and they're, and they're those avid drivers. So the average Wazer is visiting dealerships at least three times before they make a decision. And you can see that 20% of Wazers actually visit dealership five or more times before they make a decision. So they're well above the national average in dealership visits, which is especially important for you guys because we're trying to get foot traffic into your dealerships and Wazers are a great audience to do that with. So what's happening right now on Waze? So right now via our ad platform, we're seeing 73 navigations to car dealerships every five minutes. So keep in mind, this isn't with people just driving there on their own uh, if with, the, with the app open or driving there without the app. This is people who've clicked on an ad and are driving there via the, via the ad navigation. So 73 navigations in five minutes is, is pretty significant, but it is not capturing the full opportunity that we can get on Waze. And I'll talk about that in a second. But first I wanna talk a little bit about fixed operations with you guys. Because I know while brand retail is obviously important, fixed operations is also a very big bread and butter play on the Waze platform. So at Google, if you, I'm sure all of you, you know, have worked with Google or, or on Google advertising. Um, there's a lot of digital to dealership type talk right now, but a lot of things on digital are surrounded by relying on somebody searching for your dealership when they're on the couch, when they're at the office, when they're at a coffee shop. On ways, it's a little different because instead of reaching somebody when they're on their phone or just sitting on the couch looking for you, we we found, we said, why don't we just reach them? when they're passing by your location. Or why don't we reach them when they're driving, they, they will be driving by your location in 20 minutes on their commute home. So what we do is we reach drivers at the right time when they're passing by your location or when they're on their way to your location, which is very significant when it comes to fixed operations versus brand retail. And right now in the US, you can see that every five minutes we're seeing 67 nav navigations to car service venues. So this is important to know because this is not just dealerships. This is all car service venues. So when we see this, we're talking about the Jiffy Lubes, we're talking about the Valvolines, and all, all the different mechanics uh, in, in your local towns and stuff like that. The difference here is though, that the opportunity is significant. So there's not many people advertising fixed operations outside of you know the big Jiffy Lube uh, corporations of the world on Waze. So this number could get drastically higher. And I'll talk about it really quick. So what is the opportunity for you on Waze um, with fixed operations? Well, we did, we, in our poll, we, we asked them, you know, how often do Wazers actually get their car serviced? Because the average American gets a service two to three times a year. Like I said before, Wazers drive a lot, right? So the average car is actually getting serviced three to five times annually. 72% of Wazers are doing this three to five times annually. And if you average that out over all the Wazers in the US, you're looking at 90 million car services per year. That's a lot of car services that are happening with just the people driving using the Waze app. 
Now I'll caveat that with like, where are they going, right? So right now only 35% of those people are going to dealerships for their car maintenance. What happens is, as I'm sure you guys know as drivers, car maintenance isn't always top priority. So you know you have to get your oil changed. Is it the first thing you're gonna do when, when you see the oil light come on? No, you usually say, all right, let me get my oil changed. I'll probably do it Saturday. I don't feel like doing it on my way home. Or, you know, Saturday comes, you're like, ah, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. And next thing you know, two to three weeks goes by. And then your check engine light comes on. And then the check engine light comes on. And then you start getting a little more nervous about it. You're like, all right, I really got to knock this out. And you probably just drive to your local mechanic uh, in your hometown. Or if there's a Jiffy Lube or something like that where it's quick and easy. And you go there. 50% of all... Uh, navigations or 50 sorry not navigation 50 percent of all wazers are driving to those local mechanics in their hometown only 35 percent of people are actually going to dealerships i'll caveat that with saying since we started advertising car car maintenance on ways this number jumped from 30 to 35 with dealerships so there's a significant spike in navigations to dealerships just because people are seeing the ads on the platform and i'll give you a perfect example of when i did it actually myself uh, so I joined Waze from the Google team about seven months ago. And to be perfectly honest, I was a Google map guy. And then obviously when I, when I moved over to Waze, I was like, okay, I got, I got to switch. So I'll check out Waze. Uh, now I'm obviously a loyal Wazer and I love it. But um, I was with my brother. I live in New York City and my brother lives right outside. And we were driving around um, on a Sunday uh, morning. We were looking to watch the football games. It was the fall. And my brother had to get an oil change and his tires rotated. And usually our family were very loyal to our local mechanics. So my mom and dad, they live uh, in Connecticut about an hour away. And whenever my brother needs a car change, he literally has to drive all the way up to our local mechanic in our hometown that we've been going to since we were teenagers. And that usually entails us having to go visit our parents and have a nice dinner with our parents, which is always great. But the entire process of getting an oil change went from like a 25, 30 minute process to about a six hour process. And my brother was like, I have to get my oil changed. And I was sitting there, I was like, listen, man, I, you know, I don't feel like doing this whole process with you. Like there's gotta be an easier way around here. And <laughs> I actually went to the way. They're not actually on the show today, right? <laughs> they are not. And I will say, I love my parents, but for an oil change, this is a lot, a lot of work. <laughs> but I went on that, I went on the app and there was, there was a, there was a advertisement for, it said oil change, no weight, uh, any, any, any type of vehicle. I clicked on, I said, Hey, let's just go here. It's two miles away. We went there. It took 25 minutes. We got our oil changed and we were off and we were fine. Now that's an example of, you know, it's an extreme example that I use, but it's a personal example where I, I firmly believed in the ads and, and how they work. And, and this is how you can change people's mentalities and mindsets of I have going to my local mechanic too. Maybe I'll just go to this dealership because it hit me in the right moment at the right time um, on the map. So let's talk about a little bit about how we can do it and Waze Local and, and our ad offering. So how you can get people and entice them to your dealership um, via brand retail or fixed operations. So when you look at Waze in the marketplace, right, where do we fit into the advertising marketplace? At Google, we do a lot of things right now very well. So in this, from the search side, Google does, does really well at hitting people in the micro moment world when you need them most on the mobile phone. So if I'm looking for something, I could find it when I'm on the couch, when I'm at, at my desk, when I'm in a coffee shop, when I'm on the bus, whatever it may be, we could, we could find that at point A, which is the research phase. Google's also getting really good at targeting people at point B, which is in store or, or at the dealership, whether it's product reviews, price comparisons. Now there's a lot of YouTube videos showing how to and stuff like that when people are in the store and they wanna learn more about a product. The one place Google hasn't been able to capture is when someone's driving from point A to point B. And that's where Waze comes in. And that's why Waze is, is so valuable to Google as well. It's because we capture the driver during this one piece of the, of the path to purchase that Google can't cover. And really nobody covers except radio and billboards. So how Waze sees ourselves is we're actually a billboard with a digital backbone. You were taking the billboard off the street and putting it right into the map. So we're not really uh, going after like the social play. We're not really going after search or display. What we're really doing is trying to blend out of home and billboards with mobile and digital. Similar to how Google blended television and video with YouTube and kind of 
moving vi moving television and, and video together into this digital world, we're kind of doing the same with out of home and digital. And the second best thing is we're really hyper local. So we're only reaching people that will actually drive to your location. Um, one third of all Waze users are living within six miles of your business. And that's pretty significant because Waze, it's important to understand, is a hyper local play where all you want to do is target people who are driving by your location, in vicinity of your location, and will actually use your location. So when you look at our formats, right, so what are we actually providing? What are we giving you guys that you, where you can actually advertise on Waze? And these are the three formats that we provide on Waze. The first is our branded pins. Think of branded pins as like the store sign on the map. This is just a pin so when people are driving by your store, the pin pops up so people can see your brand and your location. Takeovers is that billboard across the top that we were just talking about. And then promoted search is reaching people when they're actually searching for your category or your brand. And I'm going to go into each one of these individually a little more in depth. So the branded pin is kind of the essential bread and butter piece to Waze advertising. And the reason for that is, is because it serves the most important purpose, which is location awareness of your dealership or of your stores. A lot of people, you know, take this for granted. They say like, okay, so how important is a branded pin uh, on the map? Well, it's just, it's just the same as saying, what if you had your, your dealership with no signs out front and nobody could see uh, what, was, what was actually in your store? This is a store sign that gives your brand presence, but it also gives your brand location awareness. And if you look at the stats, we actually did a stat with over uh, 1,400 advertisers on Waze. And it shows that if you were not on the map versus just having a branded pin on the map, you'll receive 20% more monthly navigations by having this branded pin. So if you think that, okay, people will navigate to my store anyway because in the local community, they know my dealership's close to them, that's not the case. If you have a branded pin on the map, we're going to increase your navigations by at least 20%. Hmm. So now let's look at the takeover. So the takeover is that digital billboard that we talked about, and it's really just a banner ad across the top of the screen. The takeover is interesting because of when it shows up. So the branded pin shows up when it's in map view. So that means when you're driving and the store is actually in map view, the pin pops up on your map. Or if you zoom out and you mainly zoom out and you're, you're, you know, you're at a zoomed view, it'll pop up as well in the map view. Takeovers are different. Because takeovers show up not when you're driving by the store, but when you're on the way to the store. And they show up when he, uh, the car comes to a complete stop for three seconds or more. Now, we do that for two reasons. The first reason is driver safety. We don't want any of our drivers trying to read ads while they're actually driving. It just doesn't mesh well, and it, it's not a good thing. And all of our ads are actually um, approved by the Highway and Safety Administration of the United States. The second thing, which is more important for advertisers, is when a car comes to a complete stop for three seconds or more, the first thing a driver does is look at their phone. So when they look at their phone, we, we put up a relevant native banner ad that's relevant to the driver on their actual drive. So how does this work? So say you're going from home to work, right? It's a, say you have a 40 minute commute to work. And this is a, this is a retro fitness gym example and retro fitness is somewhere along the way on your route. Now a takeover, you could actually decide what type of radius you want around your store to reach people. So say you want a five mile radius around your store. So you said any route that's within five miles of my store, um, I want to be uh, advertising to those people. So this is a five mile radius and my route happens to be within this radius. Anytime from when I leave home to when I pass that retro fitness, my ad can pop, your ad can pop up. Once you pass the retro fitness, your ad's not going to pop up because people are most likely not going to turn around to go to your store. So if this is like minute 30 into your 40-minute drive, anywhere from minute zero to minute 30, the ad's capable of popping up whenever the car comes to a complete stop. And it lets people know, hey, retro fitness is coming up. They have a walk-in special, join today, pay $0 for enrollment. Now with a gym, it's a little different than a dealership, but for all brands, it's important to understand that for fixed operations, a takeover ad can very well entice somebody to go into the store if they're on their way home from work. On their way to work, probably not because they want to get to work on time. You're not going to go to get an oil change on the way to work. 
With brand retail, it's a little different because if I see this, am I going to go test drive a new car on at 5.30 p.m. on a Tuesday when I'm exhausted and want to go home to get my dinner? Probably not. But what it does do is it lets them know of the offer of, of what's happening. So then they remember, they see it a few times on their commute after one or two weeks, they remember it. And then on Friday night or Saturday morning, they say, hey, you know, I am looking for a new car. I kept seeing that test drive for that new Acura. Why don't I go down to the store and check it out? And that's when you're gonna see the navigation to your dealership. So how does it work? How does the user flow work actually on the app? So say you're driving on the app and you can see on the left side, the zero speed takeover pops up when you're at a stop sign. If you're interested in the takeover, you could click drive there. When you click drive there, we actually take you to a pre-navigation screen. We do this, the main reason we do this is because we want to ensure one, the consumer actually wants to drive to this location. And we do that one for their benefit, but also for the advertiser benefit. We don't want, we don't want accidental clicks to count as navigations. So we have a pre-navigation screen, but they have to click again, go to this screen. And then when they start navigating to the actual dealership, this is when this counts as a navigation uh, in our reporting. And then finally, the last one is promoted search. So promoted search is gonna work a little differently on Waze than it does on Google. And the reason for that is, is we don't offer keyword optimization and we don't offer bidding for keywords. And I'm gonna tell you why um, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory, but there's only so many things you're gonna type into a navigation app on search, right? You're either gonna type in the exact brand that you're going to. So if it's Fiat of New Fairfield, I know I'm gonna type in Fiat of New Fairfield, or I'm gonna type in some sort of category word. So it's gonna say car dealership near me, or oil chains near me, or Fiat dealer near me, whatever, whatever those words are, and they're gonna pop up. When we did bidding for key terms, what we found was the big players in the space could just outbid everyone because there wasn't enough key terms that were being searched and they could just have a monopoly on the market. So we took off the bidding and the optimization and what we do now is when you sign up on Waze, you get put into the car services and dealership bucket. And what that means is we actually have a predetermined list of all the, the keywords that can be searched for dealerships and car services. So if any of those pop up on search, you are now eligible to actually pop up at the top of the search bar. And promoted search is actually a free offering that we offer when you sign up for branded pins. So you don't actually even get paid for all the times you show up at the top of promoted search. It's actually just used when you sign up for, for branded pins. So it's almost like a value add. But this is where you're gonna see a lot of your navigations coming from. Because like I said, the pins are a, a brand awareness and a location awareness play. You're not going to see people navigating to the pins. What they're going to do is see the pins. They're going to get used to seeing the pins. And then when they want to go to a dealership or remember, they remember a service and they need to get their oil changed, they then search it in the search bar that your, your ad pops up and then they click on it and navigate there. And that's where you're getting your navigations from. So search and branded pins are directly correlated in terms of navigations and, and budgets. And to give you an example of what, a, of what a brand retail case study looks like, we worked with Acura of Southern California, um, and really all they wanted to do was get drivers to visit dealerships to test drive their new MDX. That was, that was it. They had 12 locations, and they said, let's just get as many people to test drive the MDX. And they had the Acura logo on their pin, and they had this banner ad saying, hey, just visit your dealer today, new MDX. The results, though, were very, very impressive. They had over 10,000 navigations to those 12 dealerships in Southern California. Over, over how long 10, of a period of time? This is over a five month time frame. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, they were, they were very happy with the results here. And it's important to notice though, 10,000 navigations, they had over 7,000 clicks on search. So what we saw in the reporting was, okay, as I said before, people, we're driving by these dealerships, and you, they did get a lot. They did get some navigations uh, right from the ads, but a lot of people, like I said, at 5 p.m. on their way home, they just don't want to stop to test drive a car. So what we did see is after we had this advertising for two to three weeks, search navigation started to spike, and what happened was people who who saw the ads over the last two to three weeks 
started going to the dealerships, uh, and there's huge spikes on Friday and Saturday with minimal spikes with the rest of the days during the week. So it is, it is, a, it is a, a play where you're getting your, your brand out there and the frequency of your brand hitting these drivers has an impact on brand recognition um, and navigations. Okay. So we have a question that came in from Josh. Sure. Um, he says, and I doubt you know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it anyway because Josh wrote it in. He says, do you know how many cars Acura Southern California sold from that ad? Josh, this is a great question. Um, I don't have that answer on me. I could actually see if I could find it and get back to uh, to you with that one, if uh, Elian, if you have his, his contact info, but or just get out to everybody. Um, but that's a great question, and that's a good good point to po report on reporting. So when it comes to conversions, we can measure how many people actually drive to the dealership, but we cannot measure what happens in the dealership. Yeah, that's kind of process. Um, there, that's dealership that process, Josh, you know. <laughs> you still got to sell yeah. the car. <laughs> okay, wait, I have another question. Have yeah, uh, unfortunately, in terms of selling the car. Okay, so my next question is, um, uh, by the way, I love those branded pins so much better than, you know, just the plain old red Google Map pin that you have to hover over. But here's my question. Acura Southern California, I noticed that they just used the Acura logo. Do they or should they not have used their own dealership logo? Or do you recommend that they use the brand logo? Great question. So how what we usually recommend is for the pin itself to use the brand logo. And the reason for that is because the pin is small enough as it is. So when we first started um, onboarding dealerships uh, about eight months ago, they were using their dealership logos, but it's usually so small and, and jumbled because there's so much wording and you have to get everything in there that it didn't look well on the map and people didn't recognize it when they were driving by. So you have to remember, people are driving and they their, their, their map is up and they see these little pins. They have to know the brand and recognize the brand as they go by. So if it's not a clear brand on that pin, it's hard for them to get that brand recognition. It's easy when you see a Ford like right across the screen or right. something like that. But when it's, you know, Justin's Ford of New York on there, it's a lot of stuff for them to try and read in that split second that they're driving by the location. Fair enough. Thank now, you so what much we do, for that. And I'll, I'll add on to that. What we do suggest, though, is when they click on it or when the, the takeover comes up, that's when you put your title of, of your uh, dealership and you give them the offer and you, you can put your branded logo on that part. So right. uh, the pin, keep, keep the brand. When it comes to the takeover, then you can put your personalized touch. Okay. Okay. Follow-up question from Cameron. I was right with you, Cameron. Cameron wants to know, okay, cool, brand logo for branded dealerships. What about independent used car dealerships? Then you use the dealership logo? Yeah, so if you have more than one brand and there's more than one brand you want to, um, or the, that you sell, definitely use the actual dealership logo. Okay, and used car dealerships then also use dealership logo, right? Correct. Okay, Cameron? We're on this. All right. You're doing great, Justin. We have some great questions that have come in, but I'm looking forward to seeing what else you're going to tell us about Waze. Yeah, so I could give you, I'm going to give you one more case study here because I want to give the fixed ops case study here. And this is with Nally Nissan of Atlanta. And Nally Nissan of Atlanta, so you can see here, this is a takeover where they actually show their whole, uh, their whole title and they have their own logo on there. But if that, that was a pin, that'd be a little bit harder to see on the map. So now the Nissan of Atlanta, all they wanted to do was get drivers to understand that they could come in for an oil change. And it didn't necessarily have to be a Nissan car. They could do oil changes for any car. So they just said complete service package, $39.95, includes oil change and tire rotation. And uh, now granted, Atlanta is one of our bigger markets because traffic is obviously so bad. We have uh, millions of wazers there. But for in three months, they saw over 560 navigations to their dealership, and they were at, uh, that's an average of almost six navigations per day for just this fixed operations campaign. That is amazing. Not even including rent. For for a service yeah, this, station, that is really really strong. Six navigations a day, 
And it's one, it was one dealership location, correct? Correct. This is a single dealership location. Um, and it, it, we were not talking like crazy amounts of budget. I can't obviously, you know, tell you what they were spending, but you're not, you're not talking about thousands and thousands of dollars. These, these are reasonable budgets where we're driving, uh, you know, six navigations a day. That's a great ROI for Nelly Nissan. That is awesome. No, I can't even imagine. I mean, any dealership would love it to get six extra service ROs a day. Okay, what else you got? This is awesome. So a lot of people, like, they question, like, okay, so how good do these ads work? So we did a study with 800 ad campaigns for just single off, single off store. So that's basically any store that only has one location and that's it. So we're not talking about franchises or, or some locations that, you know, some stores have 10 locations. Single locations, um, when they advertised on the map and people were exposed to the ad versus when they were not, there's an 82% uplift in successful brand recall campaigns, which is significantly higher than you're going to get on Google Display or YouTube. And the reason for that is because people, one, their attention is the highest, and two, they're going to be seeing this ad a lot because it's always in the local community. So people are driving by or within vicinity of your ads all the time. So you become the major player in your local area, which is extremely important if you're trying to drive business in the local community. And when it comes to navigations, we saw a 35% uplift in navigations for people who were advertised for over, this is a study again with uh, 1,200 um, single locations, a 35% uplift in navigations from people who saw the ad and navigated there versus people who did not see the ad, which is another significant increase. Now, I remember I said earlier, there's a 20% increase if you are not using any type of advertising and you use branded pins. When you use branded pins with takeovers, that jumps to 35% uplift in navigations now versus the 20%. So what does this mean? It means our ads are actually working. Um, they're helping local businesses, one, get brand location awareness, and then two, actually bring in store traffic into their store. So a few key takeaways before we uh, hit the Q&A and um, action items, just remember, Ways billboards with a digital backbone. What we're doing here is we're taking out of home store signs, billboards, and we're putting them into the map. And then we can actually measure that. So we can measure impressions, we can measure navigations, we can measure clicks and engagements, um, and we could do this pretty much in any type of fashion, daily, weekly, monthly, that you guys see fit that you want to see where these navigations are coming from. Second thing is we're we're covering an important gap in this path of purchase. So right so. We are the only real digital play that's capturing 100% drivers in their cars, which is an important piece because, like I said, drivers in America are spending over seven full work weeks in their car every year. And on Waze, they're spending over 10 hours a month on Waze, driving over 6 billion miles a year, or sorry, a month. And finally, increasing foot traffic to your local business. So we're actually proving that we can increase traffic to brick and mortar locations um, in the local areas with local uh, consumers. All right, so if we can go back to the, we did the poll question at the beginning. I'd like to just go back to that poll question again to see if, if there's any changes um, <laughs> in know. the actual. Return. I'm going to try. Let's see if we can do it again. I don't know. I never did that before. Um. <laughs> if you can't, don't worry about it. Yeah, I don't think I can do it again. They won't let me. Ooh. Okay, no worries. That's, uh, <laughs> I, I know, I know, I know. One of them is going to change. I know the thirty-two percent, thirty-two percent of the people who had no clue about ways at least know what's going on with ways. <laughs> now at least uh, I know. I will say this though: we have a ton of great questions that came in from the audience. So I know that there's definite interest in there. And boy, I got to tell you, Justin, those numbers are even stronger than I, even I was expecting for you to show about how effective those ads are on Ways Local. So I'm really, really impressed. And I know my audience is too. The number of questions that have come in here already, it definitely shows that. So let's move on to the next uh -huh. slide. And I believe, oh, suggested resources. Yes. Where can people find out more mm -hmm. about how awesome Ways is? Yeah, we'll cruise through this. So, you know, if you go to ways.com slash business, it'll talk. It's our kind of our business end. So it talks about the advertising platform and what we offer there. So I encourage you to check that out. Um, we also, I attached an article here, Ways in the News. We just uh, did a full public launch of our new local platform last week. 
Uh, so it's in, uh, it was in pretty much every major news article or, or news station. And when it comes to TechCrunch, The Verge, Digital Trends, um, New York Times, all of these types of, of news stations. So I urge you to go on and read about it in the news. And then obviously a plug for Google. Um, if you haven't, download the Digital Dealer Guidebook. Um, you can find this right on, if you just Google search Digital Dealer Guidebook, it's a click, um, you know, five page PDF, but then you could download the more extensive version there, which I encourage you guys to do just for overall um, digital strategies. In terms of action items, like what's next steps for you? Uh, like I said, visitways.com slash business if you want to learn more about the ads. I would also encourage you to discuss um, what the potential is for your dealerships uh, with dealer on uh, representatives and or with uh, the Waze team, which is uh, myself. So if you want to reach out through LinkedIn, but um, you know, I partner with dealer on for a reason and that's so that they have all of their customers and you're using these, you're using dealer on for other aspects of your marketing. What I do is I make them experts at, at using the Waze dashboard and the Waze platform. So they should be able to answer all your questions as well. Um, so please talk to them about this and then really know your goals, right? So what are you looking to do in fixed operations? What are you looking to do in brand retail and, and how can, you know, ways help? So then if you have, if you have those goals, come back and then we can discuss a campaign strategy to help you meet those goals, whether it's, you know, brand awareness, whether that's just in-store, um, foot traffic for services, whether it's in-store foot traffic for retail, whether it's getting a new car, um, awareness out there, whatever it may be. Let us know your goals and then we can develop a campaign strategy to help you meet those uh, in the future. And with that being said, we can go to the uh, Q&A. I Eliana, I know. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm going to turn on my webcam now. All right, audience, I want to let you know, if you haven't yet gotten in your question for Justin Nabosna from Waze Local, subsidiary of Google. Get those questions in. We're looking forward to a really nice, robust Q&A session. We want to help you use Waze Local to get you more traffic to your showroom and more service ROs at your dealership. How awesome is that? All right. Before we do that, though, I do want to direct your attention over to the handout section of the GoToWebinar interface. There are two great handouts. They're available for immediate download. All you have to do is go to your GoToWebinar interface, look pretty low on it, look for the word that says handouts, click on the little triangle next to it. In there, two great handouts. One is Justin Nabosna's slide deck. Yes, you can have it for your very own, all of his great notes and all of that great information available to you until the end of this broadcast. And then Justin also gave us a great one-sheeter about Waze Local as well that you can download and get um, even more information. All right, so, but like I said, get those downloaded for yourself and have them for you uh, after the webinar concludes. You have until the end of this broadcast to make that happen. And Justin, you can turn on your webcam too. Don't be shy. <laughs> so thank you so oh, yeah. much. Yeah, turn on your webcam. Okay, um, there we go. And by the way, audience, it's that time. If you were here at the beginning of the webinar, then you heard me announce that our good friends over at Ways Local are giving away some great prizes. I can't win any of them, but you know what? You can. All you have to do is be the first person with the correct response to either of our giveaway questions, and that's it. You're going to be scoring a cool prize. So let's review what Ways Local has been offering up today. First prize is a Waze swag bag filled with all kinds of Waze awesomeness. You're definitely going to want this. Looks so cool in your Waze gear. All right. All you have to do is be the first person to answer this question, and you'll be taking home that great prize. Remember, if you win, you need to write on in real quick and let me know once I say your name, name of your dealership, and I'm going to need a mailing address from you as well so we can get that prize out to you. Our good friends at Waze will be sending that out to you soon after the show. All right, everyone, get to your keyboards. Good luck. First prize is on the block now. Good luck. How many miles do Wazers drive each month in the United States? Devlin Lowry, correct. Six billion miles is what we were looking for. Devlin Lowry. Never seen your name before, my friend. Yes, he says, woot, woot. <laughs> Agree. <laughs> are you a first-time dealer on prize webinar prize winner? I believe you are. I don't recall your name ever being on before. He says yes. All right. Well, congratulations. You won a really cool prize from our good friends over at Ways Local. Don't forget, I need your dealership name and mailing address. So please 
be sure to send it in. He said he's been on a couple webinars before. I love him. I love that you said that too. Thank you so much, Devlin. Congratulations. And guess what? You're already a winner today, so you can sit this one out, my friend. Now, second prize from Waze Local. Oh, they're giving away a Google Home Mini. I got to tell you, I already have one of these. Such a cool device. If you don't already have one, you're going to want one. And if you do already have one, it's okay. Makes a great gift. So <laughs> get your keyboards, everyone. Our final prize of the day is coming up now. Be the first one to answer the prize question correctly. And this prize is yours. Here we go. Good luck, everyone. When do zero speed takeovers show up on the map? Ooh, Gab Gabrielle Orb. Congratulations, Gabrielle. I think this is another first time winner. I don't recall your name either. Gabrielle Orb. Congratulations. That's right. The correct answer was when a car comes to a complete stop for three seconds or more. Congratulations, Gabrielle. She says, yay. Oh, sad face for the people who didn't win. It's okay. You know what, audience? <laughs> I know. Your name wasn't Devlin Lowry or Gabrielle Orb. You know what? Mine wasn't either. We didn't win any prizes today, but you know what? Come on back to another Dealer On webinar, and who knows, that could be the day you win a great prize on a Dealer On webinar. But for right now, big congrats go out to Devlin and Gabrielle. Congratulations. And, of course, we got to thank our good friends over at Waze Local for their incredible generosity. Very cool prizes. Thank you very much. All right, yes, winners, please don't forget to send me your mailing addresses. Oh, and they did. All right, Justin, let's go to the next slide. Wait to see all the great questions that have come in from the audience. Let me scroll up here and get some, to some of these yeah. questions. Okay. I have to say, this is not the first and only person who asked this question. All right? As a matter of fact, I'm going to try and find all of the ones who asked the same question. So, for instance, Jim, um, actually, no, Allison wrote, because Waze is a navigation app, do you see differences in strategy? for cities versus rural areas. Cameron wrote in, is ways more common in bigger cities and how is the community in smaller cities and towns? And then Chuck wrote in, my dealership is located further off the beaten path of the rest of our dealerships in my area. It's not in the most traveled part of the metro area. So how can ways help us with our traffic? So really, I think the question is, if you're, you know, great if you're on a local highway and you have a lot of traffic outside and you're just trying to get people to veer off into your, into your driveway. But what about those people who aren't in that position? How can Waze Local help those people still get more showroom traffic and, of course, service ROs? Yeah, and that's a great question. So there is definitely different strategies based on your location um, in the U.S. and uh, it, it mainly has to do with metro versus rural areas. So in every major metro, there's obviously a lot of traffic, right? So there's obviously a lot of wazers. Um, so if you're in the if you're in a metro area or, or a surrounding suburb, and a surrounding suburb could be as far as you know, in like for instance, New York, as far as an hour outside uh, New York and Atlanta and, and places like that, there's unlimited potential. So you could you could spend. Uh, a, a lot of money on Waze, and you always will have all the inventory you want because there's so many Waze drivers. When you're in more rural areas or smaller towns, the strategy definitely changes, and it changes based on how many Wazers we see in those towns. Uh, so, for instance, if you're off a beaten path, um, sometimes branded pins, which is our bread and butter, doesn't work as well as a takeover. But a takeover works well because you could extend your radius of your store to hit those major highways or thoroughfares or major major rows with all the other stores or dealerships on them. And that way, so if someone's driving on that store, they could actually navigate to your, or see your ad and navigate there from that location. So um, what we see a lot in the rural towns is that if pins are not working that well, we switch to the takeover ads because you could extend your reach almost three times uh, in terms of actual uh, inventory versus the pins. So how do you know which one's which, right? So how do you, if you're like, okay, that's great, but how do I know the difference? Um, so at Waze, what we can do, and this is, again, why we partner with like a dealer on, is that we have access to inventory tools that allow us to see um, pretty much whatever inventory is, is around any location or address in the United States. So if you said, I live at 
you know, three Autumn Ridge Road, you know, New Fairfield, Connecticut, uh, which is where my parents are. Nobody, please go visit them. Um, <laughs> we can actually you were diamond on your parents <laughs> today. <laughs> yeah, they're the easiest. They're, they, they're gonna love me no matter what, so I can talk about them. Um, we could actually tell you how many Waze drivers will drive by that location every month. So you, so when you give us your strategy, you come to dealer on, they'll they'll tell us, hey, we want these addresses. We need to look it up. We'll develop strategies for those addresses based on the inventory, based on budgets, and, and based on what you want to accomplish. Now that's, so that's awesome. a long-winded question to answer, uh, and the answer is yes. There is definitely different strategies based on uh, smaller towns and rural areas versus high metro cities. Uh, in the US. No, I think that's great. Now, Allison and Cameron and Chuck and all you people who, you know, are, are you know, off the beaten path, as you said, um, you have follow-up questions, we're here for you. But it's funny that you brought this up, Justin, because the next question I was going to ask was asked by another couple of people. Um, for instance, Cameron, who, by the way, also told me, downloaded ways up to my phone during the webinar, um, said, okay. <laughs> Is there some sort of reference chart that shows the approximate number of ways users in a particular region? And then Devlin, one of our winners today, said, how do we find out how many ways users are in our area? Is there a place they can go? Or once they've decided, hey, here's let's let's make a plan, then you go find it out? How does that work? So it's a great question. So right now our um, inventory data is not externally shareable. Um, so we don't actually have an open tool where you could actually uh, go and look at it. What we do do is my the best way I would say to do it is talk to um, a, re, a you know a representative at Dealeron uh, and they can get it for you. So we we give it to our partners where they can have access to the tool and, and they could tell you exactly how much inventory is in your area. Um, unfortunately, you cannot just go on the website and say hey how much is here how much is there or is there a heat map of this mm -hmm. um, simply because there's there's a lot of uh, privacy purposes, you know, data sharing and all that that I am not a part of. All I get told is that uh, they don't allow that externally shareable at, the, at a certain time. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, let's get to some more questions. This one comes in from Thomas. Thomas says, if a user clicks the ad and then goes to navigate to the dealership, does another goal get created if the navigation is then completed? Like, if we know now that they're heading to the dealership, can we throw a different offer at them? Um, so that is a good question. You cannot throw a different offer when they're navigating to the dealership. Um, uh, and it, it's kind of twofold. We, we, we don't do that because the first thing is we don't want your ad showing up again to somebody who's already navigating there. Because then you're going to get two navigations that they click on that and navigate two navigations for one person that's driving to the dealership so once they click to navigate there mm -hmm. we from an ad we eliminate all other ads uh, so they can just drive there we make sure that they actually navigate to the location with no distractions fair enough thank you so much great question thomas you have a follow-up we're here for you all right next one <laughs> i think you already answered this one uh cameron wrote in nice and early before you got to it says do the ads pop up on the driver's phones while they're driving wouldn't that be a distraction so now we know there's a they have to be stopped for three seconds before that that ad pops up correct correct yep and the, okay. the pins will show up but the pins are just like store signs you're not reading anything you're just looking at the brand Whereas the ads where you're trying to read it and figure out the offer only show up when you come to a stop for three seconds or more. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, next question comes in from Dustin. Dustin says, how measurable are these takeover ads? Do we get impressions if the ad is eligible versus showed versus user picked to navigate to the dealership? Great question. So you only, only um, ads that are showed Will, will count as impressions. So anything that's eligible does not count. Um, when it comes to people navigating there, that counts as navigations. So we can look at impressions, which is it actually shows up on the phone. Then we can look at engagements, which means if they click it. Then we can look at navigations, which means if they go to the second screen and they click again and they navigate there. So uh, there's kind of the three the three different um, measurements that we have when it comes to the takeover. Fair enough. All right, D Dustin, thank you so much for the great question. Okay, this next one's pretty easy. 
Michelle wants to know, is this offered in Canada? Yes, it is. Yes, we, uh, it is. We're, we're fully live in Canada. And for Canada, I'll just, I'll, I'll give a quick plug. The main areas of Wazers are obviously Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver. Um, and then obviously there's always pockets of Wazers around other towns around, but those, those are very high density uh, areas. So if you're in one of those, that's especially great. Fantastic. Okay. Um, follow up question from Michelle. She says, how does the promoted search work if two dealerships on the same street with the same brand minutes apart, both advertise on Waze? Who's going to show up first? Great question. So if everything's equal, it goes down to your budget on branded pins and who has the higher budget. Now I'll caveat that also is saying that doesn't mean if you're spending $100 and someone else is spending $200 um, that they're going to, that, that your competitor is going to win every single time. All it means is that if they're spending $200 and you're spending 100, they'll show up two times for every one time you show up. So it, it definitely rotates and you'll still get your impressions, but the, per, the competitor next to you will just get more impressions uh, throughout the month than you will if they're spending more. Okay. And that's branded pins only, not taken. Okay, great. Thank you so much. All right, Michelle, great question. All right, we still have a handful of great questions to get to, and then we'll start closing out the show. All right. Next question comes in from Kelly. Uh -huh. Kelly says, how do you filter out employees who use Waze from counting towards navigation results? Kelly, I would hope that at some point your employees will know how to get to work. But let's see what Justin has to say. <laughs> That's a, no, that's a great question. So what happens is when, how we do that is when you navigate to a location, we measure that as a unique navigation on the platform. So if your employee signs in on April 1st and navigates and uses the ad, so if they just navigate there via the SEO, it doesn't count as a navigation in our uh, platform for the ads. But if they navigate using the actual ad to work, we count that as a navigation in our reporting. Mm -hmm. Now, if they go back April 2nd and navigate to work using the same ad, we don't count it as a new navigation. We actually count it as a historical navigation. So you could see the difference between okay. unique navigations to your location and then historical navigations of people who have already clicked on it once that month and then continue using it uh, throughout the month. So if you have, you know, 10 employees that use it 30 times uh, throughout the month, You'll have 300 historical navigators, sorry, 29, because the first one will count, but 29, uh, 290 historical navigations to the store. Great. All right, Kelly, great question. Thank you. Okay, Stephen wants to know, do you have any success stories to share for a very rural dealership? Um, I Well, I can share them. I don't have any uh, documentation on it right now, but there is a lot of success. And like I said earlier, so we had one a dealership outside a small town. I think it was in Arkansas. And uh, we used branded pins, but in all honesty, they the branded pins were not giving them enough impressions that they wanted. And um, they were trying to figure out a different way to go about it. And they happened to be about three or four miles outside of kind of the main road that goes through this small town. So what we did is we put a five mile radius around their location and we started uh, advertising takeovers. So we kept the pins on there. We started advertising takeovers and the offer was, hey, uh, oil change, you know, three miles away, no, no wait or appointment necessary because they were just not getting any business. So they were like, we'll, we'll never have a wait. Let's do this. And if there is a wait, um, we'll, we'll switch our ads. And what happened was people driving down the main thoroughfare said, okay, is three miles outside the town worth no wait for an oil change and no appointment necessary? And the answer was yes. So they started seeing people start trickling in outside of town, especially in these rural areas where three miles to, to a person outside Arkansas is nothing compared to three miles to somebody from New York City who's trying to drive throughout the city. So... That's an example of a success story where pins may not do the job, but takeovers and the rights offer on the takeover was starting to send traffic to these dealerships. That sounds great. All right, great. Stephen, thank you so much for the wonderful question. I know you're not alone with trying to figure out how to get more people to drive to your dealership when you're in a very rural area. So thank you so much for that. Okay, we had three or more different people write in the same question. So let's go over these. Um, 
Andrew says, what is the pricing model? And Devlin says, will a dealer on rep be able to discuss pricing for the packages or know the pricing? And then Gabrielle said, is there a minimum spend for Waze ads? All great questions. Yes. So <laughs> the pricing model is uh, for a branded pin, it's $1 CPM. So $1 per every thousand impressions that are on Waze, which is unbeatable um, in the market today. Uh, the takeovers are, are more expensive because they're, they're offered at a premium due to the fact that you're reaching people when their attention is highest in the car looking at your ad. They're $20 per CPM. So there's $20 per every 1,000 impressions on the map. Uh, when it comes to the actual uh, minimums uh, or pricing, it's uh, based on if you work with a partner or not, believe it or not. So uh, pricing starts at $60 a month minimum for branded pins on the map. But for takeovers, it's actually pretty expensive in terms of uh, for single off locations for SMB. So if you're an advertiser that joins Waze uh, I buy on your own, takeovers actually are $3,000 a month minimum. Um, now what we do is if you're with a partner, uh, we drop that all the way down to around $700 a month minimal so it's a it's a lot it's a lot different a lot smaller and the reason for that is because we encourage people to go through partners because Waze is not big enough right now that we have our own sales force and and our own account management teams that can help you guys uh, on a daily basis where your partners are already we already trained them up they're already experts on it and they already know how to do everything and they can add this onto your digital marketing platform so the the advantages of going through a partner are very significant on Waze versus going through uh, Waze yourself if you're trying to do pins and takeovers. Okay, so Gabrielle followed up with what do you mean by partner? And of course, DealerOn is a new partner with Waze Local. We're helping our people who are on our platform use Waze Local so that they can get more traffic to their dealership. So um, I guess you'd have to find out. Hopefully you're with DealerOn. If you are, then this is this is awesome for you. And if, yep. you're, if you're not, then, I mean, you'd have to see um, if you could locate a different partner, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, sorry, I, I should have clarified partners. So, basically, I'll, I'll rewind a little bit for you guys here. My job is to figure out how to get as many local businesses in the United States and Canada on the map at scale. So, how do I do this without having a 200-person call center? And what we do is we partner with digital agencies that are extremely savvy or digital media companies that are extremely savvy in advertising for local businesses. And um, it's an advantage because obviously Google partners with a lot of these companies and they're already experts at search. They're probably experts with Facebook um, and all these and, you know, all these other areas. So we partner with them and say, hey, we're going to train you guys up on ways in the dashboard and how to sell it and how to strategically manage it. Um, so you can help your clients on ways. And once we train them up and they pass, you know, we have a certain requirements that they have to pass, they become a ways partner where now we help them in any way they can. So if they come to me and say, Hey, I got a partner, um, in, in, you know, I got a part, I got a client in Alabama that's looking to do a strategy. Um, can you help me out with this? I go and work with those, with those partners and help them strategize versus, trying to work with every single um, local business in the United States. Mm -hmm. So who are the partners? Dealeron is a partner. Um, there, there is a significant amount of other partners. We're actually building our partners website portal. Um, it should be done in the next few months. But right now, um, it's really uh, going to be, you know, talking to people and looking on their website and seeing if they have the Waze partner badge and the Waze logo. Mm -hmm. um, you'll know if they're a partner or not um, based off of that. Fantastic. All right. Thank you so much, Gabrielle. All right. Just a few more questions, and then we'll start closing out the show. Next one comes in from Imran. He says, uh, you may have mentioned this. As a dealer, can I view Waze ad analytics in real time? Can I create a custom report to be delivered or viewed anytime? Yes. So um, two things. One, you can see everything in the dashboard is real time. So uh, you click refresh every five minutes, you'll see more impressions flowing in every five minutes if you want if you want to look at it. Um, in terms of reporting, you could do custom reporting um, through the dashboard, and that comes. I think the 
the shortest time period is a day. So you have to at least do it in a day. Um, we do have a, you know, a reporting API that if you want to plug into, it'll send all the real-time dashboard to your, if you have a dashboard um, and you're, and you're uh, using it through that way, you can. But otherwise, yes, you can get custom reports every day from Waze. That's nice. All right, Imran, great question. All right, Michelle has the next question. She says, can you set constraints for weather, day of the week, time of the day, or only during opening hours? How do, how do you know, I mean, can you, yeah, opening hours, that makes sense. How does that work, Justin? Great question. So we can set a lot of constraints. Um, I will, the weather and, and things like that, uh, you, is a kind of like a national budget type targeting uh, tool. So what I mean by that is, if you're uh, you know a Starbucks that has thousands of locations nationally, what we do is we set those types of constraints because they have so much inventory available and they're spending a lot. So if you're spending over fifteen thousand or twenty thousand dollars a month on ways, you get a lot of the targeting constraints when it comes to weather. When it comes to hours of operation and day party and things like that. We can do that no matter what. If you're spending $60, we can still do it. Okay. And what that looks like is if you want to do opening hours, um, if you want to do, you know, two different accounts with campaigns, one for weekends, one for during the week, or one for nighttime, one versus daytime, these are all possibilities. Um, the only constraint that I, or the only hesitancy that we have with that is uh, if you're doing an always-on campaign where you're trying to just get your brand out there and location out there, by constraining your hours, it constrains the amount of pressions that you're going to see um, on the map. So, like people who, if you're closed at 5 p.m., if someone was late coming home from work at 7 p.m., they're not going to see your ads. And and we, you know, we're already a hyper local focused platform in the sense that we're not a Google where we have two billion users on search and it's unlimited amounts of search inventory. There is a limited amount of drivers. So the more constraints you put on, the, sl the smaller your chunk of the pie becomes. Now, you would, we see a lot of people do, which is kind of interesting, is they'll do always on like pins. So the pins always stay on. So if someone's driving by your store, those are always on. And then the takeovers, they could sometimes just have those for, for opening hours. So right. if it's, a, it's an oil chain takeover, you have that just for opening hours, but you have your brand out there at all times so people always see your brand when they're driving by. That's smart. I like that idea. Michelle says, perfect. Thanks. All right. Last question comes in from Jim. Jim says, can you have multiple locations under one campaign or do we have to separate them? Nope. You could have as many locations you want as under one campaign. So Ooh. whether you have one location or thousands, you're okay. And with the uh, partner portal or sorry, with the uh, $60, you could actually separate locations in the dashboard in terms of what you want to say. So for instance, we have a uh, client or dealership that has a services location and a retail location. And they're, they're close to each other. They're probably like five minutes away, but it's the same client, same brand. They put them under the same account and then the, the takeovers pop up based on if you're closer to the services one or the brand one. And we have two different offerings um, for the two different locations, all under one account. Very nice. I got to say, Justin, this was really fascinating stuff. Thank you so much for bringing this topic to us. It was a really wonderful presentation. Audience, I hope you enjoyed it too. Now, I'll tell you what, this recording is going to be posted within 24 hours. All you have to do is go to dealeron.com slash webinars to view our upcoming webinar schedule or access any of our past webinars too, including this one. The link is also going to be sent out to you later today. And don't forget, Justin is going to be at the Waze booth at the upcoming Digital Dealer Convention booth number three. 16. So if you're going to be there, stop by and say hi. As you can tell, he's an awfully nice guy and he's filled with so much great information. And yeah, we have a great short survey that's coming out to you. Seriously, it's three questions. So if you wouldn't mind filling that out and letting us know what you thought about today's presentation, well, we certainly would enjoy that. So thank you so much, audience. And invitations will be going out tomorrow for our next Dealer On webinar, How to Turn Mobile Site Traffic into sales. Oh, did I forget to say Digital Dealer? I'm sorry. Let me just talk to you about this. Digital Dealer is going to be uh -huh. in Orlando, Florida, and 
Dealeron's going to be there too. We are exhibiting at booth 307. And if you pre-schedule a demo by using that link on your screen there, you can score yourself a cool $100. That's right. Also, our very own Greg Gifford is going to be there as well. He's going to be talking about local SEO and using real-world examples and case studies. So you're not going to want to miss that. Remember, it's booth 307 at the upcoming Digital Dealer Convention. We hope to see you there. And invitations will be going out tomorrow for our next Dealer On webinar, How to Turn Mobile Site Traffic into Sales. Is your site optimized to turn your site traffic into measurable sales? Well, it should be. And with Chris Daringer's help, it can. If you want your dealership to increase sales and maximize leads, then How to Turn Mobile Site Traffic into Sales is the webinar for you. To help you achieve some outstanding goals, we brought in one of Dealer On's finest. Chris is the Chief Marketing Officer and oversees everything from product marketing to brand building. He has over 13 years of experience in digital marketing optimization and is an expert in all things online marketing and e-commerce. This guy knows what he's talking about. So join us for this excellent one-hour webinar where Chris will discuss how to create a mobile-first strategy to increase sales, identify common site speed errors and load time problems, and test in order to maximize your leads, calls, and sales, and so much more. If you think you can handle an increase in leads, conversions, and sales, well, then this is the webinar you've been waiting for. You can't afford to miss this opportunity, so register now. And don't forget, Dealer On's weekly webinars are held Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding our webinars and our topics, feel free to contact me. I'd love to hear from you. I'm all over the Internet. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. I mean, I'm on all the automotive social networks. Well, you know what? You can just email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today, and I hope to see you all in another webinar in our continuing education series. Take care, everyone.